Hello everyone, welcome Melissa here. I'm so happy to be here with another message. I think it's a very, very timely, timely message. Um, if for those of you who are new and who are recently subscribed, I want to thank you for subscribing. For those of you who have been watching, just watching and you haven't yet subscribed, do subscribe so you can be notified of my future videos. And today I want to talk about with why I pray with my head covered. And we see this today. There are those in, there are some churches that cover their head, some that don't cover their head. And there's all sorts of talk. But here's what I want you to focus on, my fellow sisters in Christ. I am not doing this for likes. I'm not doing this to grow my channel to 10 million subscribers. I am doing this for God's glory. And everything I do, I try my best to do it by his word. So what I want us to do today, um, I want to encourage you before you start to forget the nomination. Some of the things that block us from the truth is because certain things have been, certain truths have been uh, uh, like tied to certain denominations and certain truth has been tied to this denomination, but they have this mixed in here and this mixing over there. So we block our mind. Forget denominations. I'm not into denominations. We're into what the word, what does the word say? And today, this is what I want to ask you. So I'm going to say a very, very brief prayer. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for this opportunity to be here. I want to thank you, O Lord, for the listeners, O Father, that you have sent, O Lord God. Mighty Father, this is all for your glory, all for your honor, and all for your praise. The one true and only God whose eyes see all upon the earth, and nothing, O God, is too far from thee. Father, I pray that you would touch the hearts of every single one, O Lord God, and that you would reveal your truth into their spirit, O Father, that they may serve you, O Lord, in a way that is pleasing to you, O Father, and acceptable in thy sight. In Jesus' name, amen. Why I pray with my head covered. There are some arguments why women shouldn't cover their hair. And some of the arguments that you see out there, you Google it and you see these arguments, is it's um, the symbol of a woman's head being covered is different today. So there's the argument that that was then, but the symbol of a head covering is different today. There's another argument that, hey, that message was specifically for the Corinthians, so we don't necessarily have to do it. That was just for the Corinthians. And I would like to ask you, why? Why would a message just for the Corinthians be in the scripture? And then number three, Paul was saying that a woman's long hair is a covering and it shouldn't be worn short. And I must admit, many years ago when I was following the charismatic movement, I subscribed to number three. I believe that a woman's long hair is her covering and that it shouldn't be worn short. And that is what Paul was saying. But now let us forget what arguments that people have put out there, human beings like ourselves. And let us go into the scripture today in all humility and humble to God's word. And let us see what the word of God has to say. And before we do that, let me emphasize what is the purpose of scripture? So whether the scripture is in Corinthians, whether the scripture is in Romans, whether the scripture is in Revelations, whether the scripture is in Deuteronomy or Genesis, what is the purpose of scripture? All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. So number one, all scripture is given by the inspiration of God, all of it. And it is profitable for doctrine, for correction, for instruction. So today, the, his scripture that we're going to read today is profitable for instruction because it's going to instruct us according to what the Bible has to say, that we may be perfect and thoroughly furnished unto all good works. So let us read for ourselves. Let us go into the scripture in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3 to 16. Now I praise you, brethren, that you remember me in all things and keep the ordinances as I deliver them to you. Sorry for the typo. Right? I praise you, brethren, that you remember me in all things and keep the ordinances as I deliver them to you. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man. And the head of Christ is God. So Paul is showing us the headship here. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. So every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, is dishonoring Christ. 
as Pope. The Pope is doing. But every woman that prayer for prophesied with her head uncovered dishonoreth her head. For that is even all one as if she were shaven. For if the woman be not covered, let her also be shorn. But if it be a shame for a woman to be shorn or shaven, let her be covered. For a man indeed ought not to cover his head, for as much as he is the image and glory of God. But the woman is the glory of the man. For the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. Neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. For this cause ought the woman to have power on her head because of the angels. Nevertheless, neither is the man without the woman, neither the ma woman without the man in the Lord. For as the woman is of the man, even so is the man also by the woman, but all things of God, they are together in God. Judge in yourselves, is it comely that a woman pray unto God uncovered? Doth not even nature itself teach you that if a man have long hair, it is a shame unto you? But if a woman have long hair, it is a glory to her, for her hair is given for her for a covering. But if any man seem to be contentious, we have no such custom, neither the churches of God. Now, I know this is clear, but I want to even bring it even clearer because the Amplified Version really brings it out for you. Let's read the Amplified Version. I praise and appreciate you because you remember me in everything and firmly hold to the traditions the substance of my instructions, just as I have passed them on to you. But I want you to understand that Christ is the head, authority over every man, every single man, and the man is the head of woman, and God is the head of Christ. Every man who prays or prophesies with something on his head dishonors his head and the one who is the head. So like I've said, when the man prays or prophesies with something on his head, he's dishonoring Christ. And every woman who prays or prophesies when she has her head uncovered, disgraces her head, for she is one and the same. So what it is saying here is that when the woman prays or prophesies without her head covered, the, what the scripture is saying, forget denominations. Don't think, okay, if I'm going to subscribe to this, then hey, I have to go into this denomination. Don't tie this to the denomination. Focus on the word of God because we want to please God, not denomination, right? So every woman who prays or prophesies when she has her head uncovered, the scripture says she disgraces her head for she is one and the same as the woman whose head is shaved in disgrace. So what it is saying here, he's making an example. You know, when you, 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 you show a similarity. So Paul is showing a similarity here that the woman who praises, prays or prophesies when she has her head covered is disgrace is a disgrace for her head, which is her husband. She's disgracing her husband. Is the same as a woman whose head is shaved. So in other words, women who cut their hair bald, you know, cut their hair short, shave off the head. It's a disgrace according to the scripture. They shouldn't do that. That is what he was saying. He said, and the same as the woman whose head is shaved. He was making a comparison. If a woman does not cover her head, she should have her hair cut off. And he's saying here now, if she doesn't cover her head because it's a disgrace, it's just like having her hair cut off. Just cut off your head because you are disgraced already. This is what Paul was saying. If a woman does not cover her head, then she should just cut off her hair because she's already a disgrace. Because he has shown in the previous sentence that the two are a disgrace. To not cover your head and to have it cut off, have it shaved. So if a woman does not cover her head, she should have her hair cut off. And if it is, is disgraceful now, he's saying, justifying what he said in verse 5, for a woman to have her hair cut off or her, her head shaved, she should cover her head, put it simply. Because we as women, do you want to be walking in a disgrace? Do you want to be walking in a disgrace before God? And that's why I said, forget man, forget denomination, forget church, you know, um, the church is out there, and focus on the scripture. Do you want to be a disgrace before God? Because he's saying just as it's a disgrace for a woman to cut off her head or shave her hair, right? Then just as that is a disgrace, it is a disgrace also for her head to be uncovered when she's praying or prophesying. So do you want to be a disgrace? So he's saying she should just cover her head so she would not be a disgrace. 
let's go to verse 7. A man ought not have his head covered during worship, since he is the image and reflected glory of God. But the woman is the expression of man's glory. This is how God made it. For man does not originate from woman, but woman from man. For indeed, man was not created for the sake of woman, but woman for the sake of man. This is how God created it. Therefore, the woman ought to have a sign of authority on her head. So why are you covering your head when you're praying or prophesying? Number one, you don't want to be a disgrace. You don't want to disgrace your husband, right? You don't, in the eyes of God, that is, the Lord sees it as a disgrace. And me personally, I don't want it to be one in my books that the Lord has written down in my books on me. You know what? You did all this well and you did all that well, but you kept disgracing your husband, although you know it was, it was wrong to do, right? So I will cover my head. So he's saying here, therefore the woman ought to have a sign of authority on your head. So when you cover your head, it is a sign of authority that the man, your husband is your authority over you. And also for the sake of the angels, so as not to offend them. So in other words, we could offend the angels. Think about that. Nevertheless, woman is not independent of man, nor is man independent of woman. For as the woman originates from the man, so also man is born through the woman, and all things, whether male or female, originate from God as their creator. Judge for yourselves. Now he's asking you this. Is it proper for a woman to offer prayer to God publicly with her head uncovered? He's asking to judge for yourself. If you don't want to listen to him, judge for yourself. Is that proper? Does not common sense itself teach you? Now here he's making another example. And that is why I said, let us see what the scripture says. Because a lot of people have this all convoluted. And said, what Paul is saying is that we should, our hair is our covering. This is an example. He's saying, doesn't nature. So by the terms of nature, nature itself teaches us that if a man has long hair, it's a dishonor to him. And if you go back into the Torah, you would see in the Torah where that is stated that a man should not have long hair. And many want to talk about um, Samson, but that was for a specific purpose, right? Specific purpose. So nature itself teaches you that if a man has long hair, it's a dishonor to him. But if a woman has long hair, it is her ornament and glory. So our long hair is our ornament and glory. That is nature, what the Lord has given unto us. It's an ornament for us. For her long hair is given to her as a covering. Now, if anyone is inclined to be contentious about this, we have no other practice in worship than this, nor do the churches of God. So what Paul is saying, you have to cover your hair. You have to cover your hair when you pray or prophesy. And he was making a comparison to show us that even in nature itself, it's not normal for a man, for a man to have long hair. It's not normal. It's a dishonor to him. And likewise, it's normal, isn't it, for a woman to have long hair? How do you feel when your hair, I remember my hair used to be very long and I did the worst thing ever. I went and started straightening my hair. My hair broke off. It got so short. It couldn't even make one plait. And I went literally praying and asking God, Father, you said my hair is my ornament and glory, Father, please. You know, I touched my head, praying for my hair to go. And now my hair has gone. My hair has gone. It can all make one plait. It's back down to my, my, my shoulders, you know, because nature itself teaches you. In nature itself, for women, our hair is our glory. Our hair is our ornament, right? And I'm talking in terms of nature. So he was making a comparison. But in terms of spirit, in terms of the practice that the churches should have, he said, if anyone is argumentative about this, they have no other practice in worship than this. So when it comes to worshiping God, the practice that women should have is that they should cover their head. And he's saying, nor do the churches of God in general. We have no other practice in worship than this, nor do the churches of God in general. So it was not something just for the Corinthians. The churches of God in general all had this practice that women covered their head now some would say well that was for then things have changed so why is it that we quick to believe well you know what tithing hasn't changed right so the blessings haven't changed so all these blessings and did you run me i could claim all of them but so we are very convenient the lord said he changed if not we've read at the start what the scripture is for i would humble and i would prefer to take his instruction than not be obedient 
not take his instruction and have to answer on the last day. So based on scripture, a woman should cover her head when she prays or prophesies. This is what is right before God, based on scripture. Paul is saying the churches of God have no other practice but this in worship, that women should pray or prophesy with her head covered. If a woman doesn't cover her head when she's doing so, based on scripture, she's dishonoring her husband. She's the expression of her man's glory. Now, some will say, but if she doesn't have a husband, well, if she doesn't have a husband, she doesn't have a husband. It doesn't matter. The scripture says that a woman ought to cover her head, first of all, when she prays or prophesies, right? She was created on account and benefit of man. So you have to cover your head. And also, it will offend the angels. Based on scripture, covering your head when you, when you pray or prophesy is a symbol of your submission to authority. And I'm going to have another video on submission because many, many men out there as well have it all wrong. Yes, women, you ought to submit yourself to the men. This is, there is no question about that. But yes, men, you ought to love your wives. And I'll do a separate video on that. They never talk about that part, right? They ought to love their wives. So your head covering is a symbol of your submission to authority. So imagine if you refuse to do it. How are you viewed in God's eyes? As rebellious, as disobedient. I didn't say it. That's what's in the scripture. So if the scripture said it's a symbol of your submission to authority, then not doing it is a symbol of what to God? I fear God. I fear God. Let it not be a charge that is raised against me. I would humble and I will cover my head when I pray or prophesy. When I worship, I will cover my head. And I will encourage you to take it to the Lord in prayer. If you're still not convinced, I always say go pray and by his Holy Spirit, the Lord has a marvelous way of revealing the truth to those who are truly seeking. Those who are truly seeking the truth. And that's why I said at the start, forget about denomination. Don't associate this to any denomination. Don't associate because that's, the, that's what the enemy brings to blind people so they're not able to see the truth because the first thing they're seeing is, oh, if I do this, then I'm so and so. No, just do what the scripture says. Focus on the scripture. Focus on the word of God. Focus on your desire of wanting to please God. We call to be set apart. We call to be obedient unto him, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. And I believe part of that is that submission, wearing that symbol of submission to authority in God's eyes, not offending the angels. Yes, the angels can be offended so that you don't want those angels to go bring a bad report. Yes, they can be offended. That's what scripture says. We have to stop picking and choosing what we want to believe in scripture and just believe the word. Believe the word. So I leave that with you, you know, and I pray that it has enlightened you. For those of you who probably still had the question, right? It was not something just for the Corinthians. It was not that the symbol of head covering has changed. As Hamas said, the scripture does not change. If God himself doesn't change, I want to know how come scripture is changing. The scripture does not change. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. You think God didn't know that the world will come to the year 2023? Huh? And if the scripture has changed for that, why the blessings haven't changed? Why you can still claim those blessings? People, we have to stop being convenient because you know what? We have to answer to God. We have to answer to him. So let us submit to God in humility. If you're still in doubt, submit to him in prayer and by his Holy Spirit, he will certainly lead you to his marvelous truth and reveal it into your heart the way he wants to because he is the one who teaches and guides us. The scripture says, if anyone is argumentative about a woman covering her head, Paul says, and he, of course, was inspired by God as we've read in the beginning, that we hold to and recognize no other custom in worship than this, nor do the churches of God in general. This is a custom in worship that is recognized by all the churches at that time. It is recognized that a woman ought to cover her head because if she doesn't cover her head, it's a disgrace, just as if she had cut her hair off. And he said, if cutting your hair off is a disgrace, if you don't want to cover your head, he said, then you better just shave it because you are disgraced already, right? Just shave it. So cover, covering our head is what Paul is advocating and emphasizing that women should do when they're praying or prophesying. If you're still in doubt, take it to the Lord in prayer. Be blessed.